Siemens Connect is a Microsoft Windows application that allows you to connect to a set of fuse savers over an encrypted wireless connection. Siemens Connect is the tool for commissioning, monitoring and controlling fuse savers. On this first screen, when you launch Siemens Connect, it gives you the following options. You have the option to set up a new installation, to change an existing installation, to operate an existing installation, to access the offline event database, and to manage the policy files that are stored on the laptop. One point to note when you start Siemens Connect is in the bottom left, you will have a message saying a USB antenna customer number, and this needs to be present for you to have access to the first three buttons on this screen. So the first of these buttons is set up a new installation, and this is what you use to commission a set of few savers prior to installation. When you click set up a new installation, the software will scan for any fuse savers within 50 feet using the wireless antenna that's in the USB connection. In this case, it has found two, so we can continue and Siemens Connect will proceed to connect to those two devices and prepare them for setting up and commissioning. Once Siemens Connect has scanned the area for few savers within range, it will connect to them. And here we see we have two few savers with serial number 15400 and 15404. We can connect to those and proceed to set them up. So when you're selecting which few savers you want to configure, you have the ability to add an asset number or some asset identifier and to specify which phase the fuse savers will be installed on. You need to give it a line name which can be the facility point number or some identifier that, that identifies the site where the fuse savers are installed. You select a policy file you specify the rating and type of fuse at that location and then you click apply and this will then configure the fuse saver in this case to be a set of two so this is a two phase fuse saver installation so when it says the line is successfully configured then you know those fuse savers have been set up and are ready for installation. The second button, change an existing installation. This can be used at any point in the future after a fuse saver has been commissioned to change the settings, uh, to change the rating or the policy file uh, or, or any of the descriptions of the device while the devices are in service. When you click change an existing installation, we have a screen for reconfiguring and this will allow us to, for example, change the rating of the fuse should the, and this is typically done if the load changes, for example, and then it's simply a matter of clicking apply to change that setup. The third button on the screen is operate an existing installation. This is the screen that you go to when you are visiting the site and you want to see the condition of the fuse saver and it provides you with all the operational information of those devices uh, in real time. This is the operating screen that shows the status of the installation and provides some key information about the state of the fuse saver. We see here the line current that is currently in the device. We see the position of the external lever, which could be up or down. Here we have the protection is running. This is the protection mode. We can see how many operations the fuse saver has done. We see that the health of the fuse saver is good. The peer-to-peer -peer communications is functioning. The battery life and also the vacuum interrupter life. We have here two buttons that allow you to flash the LED on each phase. So this will help you identify which fuse saver is on which phase. Here we have some information on the last fault that was seen. 
So here we can see the RMS and peak current of those faults uh, with the load that was present before the fault and how long the fault was present for. And in this case we see FuseSaver cleared the fault and restored power without the need for operator intervention. If you want to operate the fuse saver from a laptop, you select the operate command and then specify which phases you would like to operate and then click the operation that you want to execute. So we see that the devices are closed. In this case, we want to trip them. So we can click trip and there are multiple opportunities to confirm that you want to actually make an operation. After 60 seconds, the device will operate either to trip and close, and then the screen will update to show the new state of the device. So here we see that the devices are now open. Three other buttons on the operate line screen is to view the policy. So this allows you to see what the settings are on those fuse savers at that particular location. You can view the event history. Each fuse saver can store up to 3,000 events and these can be viewed using the view event history uh, to look at the offline event database. Each event is time stamped down to 10 milliseconds and it's therefore possible to see all the events that have occurred up to 3,000 events. And the final button is view more details which will give more of an insight into how the fuse savers are configured. So this screen shows you the policy file that is installed uh, and the firmware versions on each fuse saver and also the ratings. So here we see the 6.3 KA 200 amp continuous fuse savers. The final two buttons on the home screen for Siemens Connect allow you to access the offline files. So the first one is to access the event database. And this allows you to look at all the offline event files for all few savers that you would have installed on your network. All these events are downloaded automatically when you connect to FuseSaver. Uh, there's no need to specify that you want to download that. Reliability data. Reliability data shows you the statistics that you might need for calculating your SADI, SAFI and MAFI. So looking at this example we see that the number of detected faults on phase A was 2. Uh, it did not clear or have to operate on any faults and it has not seen any permanent faults over that period of operation. Availability data shows you the amount of time that the fuse saver has been available to do its job. In this case, after installation, it was not available. However, once current was established and normal load conditions were found, we have 100% availability in this particular example. This is a good indication of how appropriate the location where FuseSaver is installed is for that device. Load profile data. FuseSaver stores the minimum, maximum and average load current for each day and it's possible to download those and plot them to give an indication of the load on that spur line. This is more information than is typically available uh, today and will often help planning decisions and other network operational decisions. And finally, there is the event database itself where you can export, import and view event files offline uh, when you're in the office. The final button, Manage Policy Files, is where you would import and export policies. Policy files are typically not modified very often, but when they are, this is where you would go to bring in a new policy and also to set preferences around the policies that you have available. And that was an in-depth look at Siemens Connect and how it can help you get the most out of your FuseSaver installation.